Uh, if I give you these handouts to start off with, I do have a slightly enlarged handout yeah. if anybody needs one, um, because it, it sort of did, that's uh, that one, please. It did um, print out a little bit smaller than I was hoping, but um, as I say, there is a, a larger version if you need it. <coughs> Right, um, today I'm going to talk to you um, about a subject which is very close to my heart, uh, traditional beer making. Um, first of all, um, let's do, just um, go through a few um, health and safety issues. Is everybody aware of the fire exit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Straight out there. And the toilets are to the right. Um, we will be handling some chemicals and some yeast today. Um, if you do have any um, uh, allergies, uh, please let me know and, and don't handle the, the, uh, the yeast in particular. Okay, the uh, learning of the projector today is to recall the four steps of traditional beer making. Um, the difference between traditional beer making and um, sort of the commercial beer making is traditional beer making is something you can do at home. Uh, using raw ingredients. Um, do any of you, or have any of you, ever made beer at home? Just out of interest. Yeah, might have done more <laughs> yeah. A few yeah. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Did you use plastic dustbins? I think I made plastic dustbins. <laughs> 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 I mainly did wine, but I did do a bit of beer as well in the casting. You know, yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 I got rid of it recently. <laughs> did, did you use the sort of raw ingredients or? Um... Well, I did. I used a can. Little yeah. Little instructions. Yeah, lots of. Yeah. This is a great way to get into it. Mm. Um, this is slightly different because we will be using raw ingredients. It's just basically an overview of how you would use raw ingredients. Right. Um, the four steps is really quite straightforward. Uh, there are only four steps involved. Uh, there's a lot of sort of mystery. Um, about the process of creating beer, but it's a, it's a very straightforward, very natural process. Um, the first step of traditional beer making is to make sure that you sterilise all your equipment. Um, Sterilising the equipment um, can be carried out using all sorts of different chemicals, and I, I don't know what you've used in the past, if you, if, did you bother sterilising before you made your beer or? Might have done, I might have, yes, I think I probably did actually. Yeah. Yeah. And um, beer kit, I think you just have to get all the instructions through the beer kit, so do this, do okay. yeah, It was all sort of built yeah. in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, there are three sort of main um, chemicals you can use to sterilise your equipment. Um, some people use bleach, um, uh, diluted to a very sort of um, sort of thin dilution so it, um, that can kill all the germs. Um, some people use this stuff, sodium metabisulfite if you like to just oh, pass yeah. that around. Uh, it's basically a white powder that you mix with water um, to a particular ratio and then you can use that to um, sterilise all your equipment which is basically this stuff in front of me. Um, sodium metabisulfite by sulfate, once it's in a solution, you can reuse it, so it's quite economical to use. So that's why I use that rather than things like Camden tablets, which are quite expensive but basically made of the same stuff. Um, once you've sterilised um, your equipment, uh, the next step, the second step, is to make what I call a beer soup. So traditional beer making is very much like uh, making soup. Um, it's the same principle. Um, you get your ingredients, prepare them, pop them into boiling water and basically simmer for 15 minutes. And the sort of ingredients um, that you would use in traditional beer making would be malt. Uh, I've got two different sorts of malt here. You would use two different, the two different types. Um, we've got powdered malt and we've got what's called cracked malt uh, and hops and that's basic, the basic ingredients for um, a good bitter now I don't know if you want to have a quick look at this stuff, we can pass these around 
We've got the powder of malt, which is the substance, the ingredient that adds the food or the yeast um, to um, carry out fermentation, which is the third stage, which we'll look at in a second. Um, the powdered malt is um, basically um, malted barley. Um, it's derived from barley, it's processed and turned into powder. The other kind of malt that you would put into uh, traditional beer is this kind of malt, which is flat malt. Now, flat malt is amazing stuff. It's basically uh, crunched up barley that's been processed. You don't use as much of this as you would of the, the powder malt. And I don't know if you want to pass that around and have a good sniff. <laughs> <coughs> that one's actually called chocolate. I'm going to get a five. Yeah. Clears your nose around. Have a good sniff of the malt. Um, now that is called chocolate malt for a reason. Um, can you give me an idea what sort of beer you would use a very dark malt like that in? Brown, brown, brown or brown. Stout. Yeah. Stout, yeah. Stout, yeah. Stout, yeah. Stout, yeah. Brown, up. that's right. Um, chocolate malt is, malt comes in all sorts of different colours basically and the colour is derived from the length of time that the malt is roast, uh, roasted when it's processed. The darker malt have a much stronger flavour, much stronger smell. Um, and uh, so the darker malt you use to create, say, a stout or a a, um, a darker ale, the lighter malt you'd use for something like a lager or a, a lighter coloured ale. So what you do is you pop your ingredients, as I say, pop, pop them into boiling water and simmer for 15 minutes, just like you would make a soup. Um, you can experiment by adding all sorts of other ingredients if you want to add fruit juice, you can make, for example, if you added apple juice, you can make an apple ale, um, all sorts of things. The world, just like any soup, the world is your <laughs> is your oyster. You can just add anything you like, herbs, uh, refined sugar, honey even. Um, honey's a good one. Adds a very soft flavour to, um, to the beer. Um, step three, so after you've made your beer soup, which is technically known as a wort, um, you want to um, uh, actually uh, ferment the wort that you've created to create beer. Um, fermentation is the process whereby yeast turns sugar to alcohol. It's a perfectly natural process. Um, it's what yeast does naturally. It's, it's almost as though you know, it's yeast's purpose in life is to produce, <laughs> produce alcohol. Um, as a byproduct, it, it also creates carbon dioxide. Um, <clears throat> fermentation is carried out in something like this. This is quite a small little bucket, but you wouldn't need anything bigger than that. I mean, you can create several batches of beer with these sorts of buckets. Um, uh, some people call them brew pots, some people call them fermenters. But basically, it's a food-grade plastic bucket with um, a lid on the top. Um, you basically let your wort cool and you add your yeast, and then you leave it for seven days, seven to ten days. Uh, there are sort of different kinds of yeast. Um, I've got here a dry yeast, um, but you can also buy live yeast, which is kind of like a gooey. Um, it, it looks a little bit like cheese, actually, slightly sloppy cheese. Um, but dry yeast is fine. Um, some beers actually use the wild, the wild yeasts that are in the air around us, um, some of the more esoteric um, beers from Belgium. Uh, which are called lambic beers. Um, the fourth step after fermentation, um, you, you've basically created your beer after this. After fermentation, it's, it's ready to go. Uh, you need to bottle it. Um, bottling. Um, the first sort of thing that you would need to do is to prime the beer. So you want to add a bit of sparkle to your beer. Um, and to do that, you would take a small sample of, um, of beer and add some malt to it, um, just to add a bit more sugar, and it induces another fermentation in the bottle, so you get a bit of sparkle. 
Um, and then you can bottle your beer using special bottles. Anybody um, can think of a reason why you'd need to use special bottles for bottling home brew? Keep your beer. Sorry? Keep your beer fizzy. Keep your beer fizzy, yeah. yeah. Doesn't go flat. Fermentation is going to continue. Yeah, in the bottles. So, so it's it producing CO2. Yeah. So you need a good strong character. So for safety reasons, you always need to use good strong bottles. Um, a lot of people use plastic bottles because they just don't explode. Um, but if you get special homebrew bottles, um, like those, or like those with the um, the top on, uh, those are the best option. Um, and, and finally, you would just bottle, just use a bottle capping machine like this one here, and you would pop a cap on the bottle. This is a bit of a whiz through um, the basic principles of beer making. Um, <clears throat> basically, just to remind you, the four basic steps of beer making. Uh, first step, sterilise. Second step, make your beer soup. Third step, ferment your beer. And then fourth step, um, bottle your beer and pop it away. And then it will be ready in a couple of weeks to, to drink with your friends. Or on your own, or however you want to drink it. <laughs> um, Making traditional beer is really simple. Uh, you don't need that much room to do it. This, I mean, basically, this is all you need to create some really good tasting beer. Um, there are lots of online resources that you can look at on the web. Um, lots of tutorials if you want to take this further. Um, right, I, I think if we just do a quick quiz before I finish, um, what I'd like to do is just go around the room and see if you can. Um, record. I thought Kelly might have been involved in this bit, but um, it's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll just go around. Um, so, Susan, can you recall what the first step in um, traditional home brewing is? Sterilising. Correct. Well done. Um, Andy, second step? Um, making soup. Making soup. Brilliant, yeah. Uh, third step, Paul? Fermentation. Fermentation. Excellent. And fourth step? That's basically. <laughs> that's basically. It's a very simple process. Often people get a bit kind of think it's more than it actually is, but it's a very natural, simple process. Um, does anybody have any questions about the process? That How happens? strong is the beer? comes from home brewing. I can recall it being very um, strong. It, it depends how much sugar you put in. Right. So can you control is, that though? Yeah. If, depending on the kind of beer that you want, um, you would put in um, varying amounts of this stuff. So if you look online, there are all sorts of recipes of varying strengths. <laughs> <laughs> so for an ordinary bog standard kind of bitter, tasty bitter, would probably have 170 grams of this um, per I think I've put some, some instructions yeah, down per, per litre or uh, uh, 4.5 litres. Um, you can, if you add something like honey, you're introducing more sugar. Mm -hmm. So you get a much stronger beer. So that's, oh, that's honey beers. Why the honey beers are really they, they have a bit of a kick, yeah. They do. <laughs> I think we're right, saying we've become a point where fermentation will stop because the, 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 the sugar um, stops the. So the yeast starts to be destroyed by the sugar, yeah. so therefore fermentation stops. Yeah. And then you've got to start thinking about distilling it then again. Oh. When, when the yeast has uh, sort of got through all the, all the sugar in the, um, in the fermentation, um, in the fermenter or the, the brew pot, mm. then it starts to, to, to become inactive. Yeah. It doesn't produce carbon dioxide, so the lid on your fermenter won't be popping up or won't be bulging. So that's when you know when your, your beer is finished fermenting, which is a very good point, which I should have mentioned earlier. Yeah, I'm not nice. Excellent. Right, and that's it for my, my short introduction to home room. Okay, well done. Yeah. Yeah.